All right, hello. Today we're gonna look at 10 movies and how they portray and analyze environmental topics. And I try to vary them. And I also, they are released over 90-ish years from each other in total. So we have a good variety to look at and different eras of Hollywood, a lot of different topics. So it's gonna be long, let's get into it. Okay, so the first movie we'll look at is 1933 King Kong, directed by Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Shostak, starring Robert Armstrong, Faye Ray, and Bruce Cabot. King Kong is about a group of filmmakers who travel the Indian Ocean to do location shoots for the main character, Carl Benham's New Jungle movie. They find King Kong have to deal with many tribulations with Kong and the native tribe of the island. I'm figuring out any connection to the apes curriculum, there really isn't anything direct at all. The movie is really dated, coming out 91 years ago, but it does despite a couple concepts that I can't make a far-fetched connection to. First, biodiversity and habitat loss. King Kong is depicted as a giant ape living on a secluded, isolated island. The film doesn't explicitly show the cause of this isolation, but we can imagine this island ecosystem being unique and undisturbed, and the arrival of the filmmakers disrupts this balance foreshadowing the concept of habitat loss and the impact humans can have on isolated ecosystems. Second, sustainability and exploitation. The film portrays the capture of Kong as motivated by greed and a desire for sensationalism. Kong's capture disrupts the natural order of the island and ultimately leads to his death. This connects the ideas of unsustainable resource extraction and the consequences of exploiting natural resources for short-term short gain and money. Now, I know those are kind of out there, but I have to do that because I want to make a connection to a very old movie. That's a really old Hollywood movie. I guess this is America's perception of these issues. They were pretty non-existent at the time as we were going through the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. But it's interesting to see how they portray this at all because filmmaking was only around for so long by this point. But I did find an article that explains how this, the species that King Kong is based off of called Giganto. Ficatus blackie went extinct 215,000 years ago. And this article, I'll quote it, says, During a study of 22 Chinese caves, scientists dated soil, teeth, and dirt to paint a complex picture of how the species fared over millennia. However, evidence from ancient pollen trapped in cave dirt shows the main issue the giant apes faced was the fact that the climate was altering and the seasons were becoming more extreme and varied. The birth of wet and dry seasons and the stark contrast between the two 700,000 years ago made it harder for the species to find food, the team believes. As other primates flourished and adapted to the change and extreme seasonal variation, the larger apes failed to do so. Their teeth changed in a bit to eat a wider variety of food, but the animals were less mobile and ended up in an isolated section of woodland. And to quote Professor Yinqi Zhang, a paleontologist and co-lead author of the study of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the G. Blackie was the ultimate specialist compared to the more agile adapters like orangutans, and this ultimately led to their demise. So I guess there are some connections to the apes curriculum. Alright, the second movie, the 1968 Planet of the Apes, directed by Franklin J. Schaffner and starring Charlton Heston, Roddy McDowell, and Kim Hunter. It's about three astronauts marooned on a futuristic planet where apes rule and humans are slaves. Yes, this franchise has been reinvented multiple times, but the original gives a good idea how this era of Hollywood approach environmental issues, and there's a few more clear ones here. First, the consequences of pollution and resource depletion. The film doesn't explicitly show the cause of Earth's transformation into an ape-dominated world. However, the audience is left to wonder if human actions like pollution or unsustainable resource use might have contributed to the planet's decline. This sparks discussion about the potential long-term impact of our choices in the environment. Second, human impact on ecosystems. The ape society on the planet seems to be functioning and thriving. This could be seen as a commentary on how if humans were removed from the equation, nature would find a way to adapt and rebuild. It raises questions about the resilience of ecosystems and the potential consequences of human disruption. And finally, sustainability and societal collapse. 
Film hints at a past human civilization with advanced technology, and their downfall suggests a potential future where unsustainable practices lead to societal collapse. And America during this time period has went through a decade of civil rights, reformation, and transformation and legislation. And only a few years before, the first modern significant environmental regulation laws were passed, with way more as Nixon would take office. So we're in an interesting time period here. And we have eight more to go through, so let's keep going. Chinatown came out in 1974 and was directed by the bum Roman Polanski and star stars Jack Nicholson, Faye Dunaway, and John Huston. This movie is about a private detective hired to expose an adulterer in 1930s Los Angeles who finds himself caught in a web of deceit, corruption, and murder. And first, the corruption that is referenced here is based on real-life California water wars, which were a series of political conflicts between the city of Los Angeles and farmers and ranchers in the Owens Valley of Eastern California over water rights. The central plot revolves around a fight for water rights in Los Angeles during a drought. The film portrays how powerful individuals manipulate water resources for personal gain, leading to ecological and social problems. And this connects to discussions about water scarcity, sustainable water management practices, and the ethical implications of water allocation. Second, environmental politics and corruption. Chinatown exposes the dark side of environmental politics and how powerful figures use environmental issues to serve their own agendas, often at the expense of the environment and the public good. And third, unsustainable practices and consequences. The film portrays how greed and short-sighted thinking can lead to environmental degradation and the focus on diverting water for unsustainable development foreshadows the potential consequences of prioritizing profit over environmental health which is now more modern issue than it was 50 odd years ago. And the history of the entire California Water Wars is really interesting, but I'm not gonna read all of that article because this video will be very long already. And it came out right after President Nixon created all his environmental legislation. So this was very early 1970s, including the creation of the EPA. So I guess this began an era of a more aware United States towards environmental issues as Hollywood would change its depictions over the coming decades, as we will see with this next movie. Uh, the legendary Jurassic Park came out in 1993, directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum. This movie is about a select group of paleontologists chosen to tour an island theme park populated by dinosaurs created from prehistoric DNA. While the park's mastermind billion, billionaire John Hammond, portrayed by the legendary Richard Attenborough, assures everyone in the facility is safe, they find out otherwise when various ferocious predators break free and go on the hunt. There's a few clear environmental topics depicted here. First, the ethics of de-extinction, which who knows if this is even possible, kind of is, and the film explores the idea of bringing extinct species back to life through genetic engineering. While dinosaurs are a spectacle, the movie raises questions about the ethics and potential consequences of manipulating nature in such a drastic way, and this sparks discussion about the boundaries of specific boundaries of specific scientific advancement and the importance of considering ecological implications. Second, biodiversity and introduced species. Jurassic Park showcases a recreated ecosystem populated by dinosaurs. However, these creatures are not part of the natural world on Isla Nublar, and the film explores the potential dangers of introducing non-native species into an established ecosystem. And third, unintended consequences and risk management, just kind of going off of what we just said. The park's reliance on technology for control ultimately leads to disaster. Jurassic Park serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of risk management and the potential for unintended consequences when dealing with complex systems like ecosystems. This connects the discussions about environmental impact assessments and the need to consider all potential risks before implementing new technologies. Now this movie is very classic, and the quote, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. In my eyes, it's the beginning of Hollywood's modern criticisms of dangerous environmental practices, which we'll see with the next movie. So 
The legendary Pixar's WALL-E came out in 2008, directed by Andrew Stanton, starring Ben Burtt, Alyssa Knight, and Jeff Garland. This Pixar masterpiece is about WALL-E, short for Waste Allocation Load Lifter Earth Class, who is the last robot left on Earth, and he spends his days tidying up the planet one piece of garbage at a time. But during 700 years, he has developed a personality, and he's a little more than lonely. As beautiful as this movie is, Pixar is displaying some clear environmental issues and topics and warnings. First, Pollution and Waste Management. The film portrays a future Earth buried under mountains of trash, a consequence of unchecked consumerism and throwaway culture, which is us now. And this connects directly to discussions about waste management practices, pollution control strategies, and the importance of sustainable consumption habits. Second, the climate change and environmental degradation. Now, Wally doesn't explicitly mention climate change, but the devastated Earth suggests a potential future ravaged by environmental problems. And the dependence on a technological fix, the Axiom spaceship, which holds all the humans, which is in space and not on the destroyed Earth, and they escape the polluted planet, highlights the consequences of neglecting environmental issues. Going off of that, technological dependence and solutions, the film explores the idea of relying on technology to solve environmental problems, while robots like Wally clean up the mess, the root cause, human behavior, goes undressed. This raises questions about the limitations of technology and the importance of finding sustainable solutions that involve behavioral change. This isn't Pixar's foreshadowing of what direction humanity is moving towards as technology is actively rising, I don't know what is. And this came out in a time where these ideas are being accepted and will soon be able to be spread by a mass media and more people get access to technology. Avatar, released in 2009, directed by James Cameron, starring Sam Worthington, Zoe Saldana, and Sigourney Weaver. This box office king is about the lush alien world of Pandora, where the Na'vi, beings who appear primitive but are highly evolved, live. Because the planet's environment is poisonous, human Na'vi hybrids, called avatars, must link to human minds to allow for free movement on Pandora. Our characters go through trials and tribulations relating to how they approach this society. And the filmmakers have clear goals here showing environmental issues. First being sustainability and resource depletion. Earth and Avatar is a depleted planet ravaged by resource extraction. The film portrays humans traveling to Pandora, a moon rich in resources, mirroring real world concerns about resource scarcity and the environmental consequences of unsustainable practices. This ties directly into the discussions about sustainable development and responsible resource management. Second, Biodiversity loss and habitat destruction. Pandora boasts a rich and complex ecosystem teeming with unique life forms. The human corporation, called in the movie the Resource Development Administration, RDA, threatens this, bi threatens this biodiversity by destroying the Navi's home, the giant tree called the home tree where they get all of their valuable resources. And in the movie, this is kind of the third main topic, indigenous knowledge and environmental protection, the Navi people live in harmony with their environment, demonstrating a deep understanding and respect for the natural world. This contrasts with the, destruct the destructive approach of the RDA. This aspect of the film highlights the value of indigenous knowledge and environmental protection and the importance of considering traditional ecological knowledge alongside scientific approaches. Now, Cameron's unique vision of portraying these issues worked out as this movie, Accounting for Inflation, is the highest grossing film of all time. It's reached more people around the world than anything else and its clear portrayal of environmental problems should sit with audiences around the world more than most films. And keep going, we got a few more. In 2012, The Lorax animated movie was released, directed by Chris Renaud, starring Danny DeVito, Zac Efron, and Ed Helms. This movie is about 12-year-old Ted, Zac Efron, who lives in a place virtually devoid of nature. No flowers or trees grow in the town of Meadville. Ted would very much like to win the heart of Audrey, played by Taylor Swift, the girl of his dreams, but to do this, he must find that which he most desires, a Trufula tree. To get it, Ted delves into the story of the Lorax, played by Danny DeVito, once the gruff guardian of the forest, and the Onceler, played by Ed Helms, will agree to overtake his respect for nature. This classic Dr. Seuss story portrays clear environmental topics, first being the unsustainable consumption and resource depletion. Fneedville, the film's central town, 
thrives on the excessive consumption of Thameed's product made by Truffle Trees. This represents unsustainable consumption patterns and the depletion of natural resources for short-term gain. Second, habitat destruction and the loss of biodiversity. The film clearly shows the consequences of cutting down the Truffula trees and how the vibrant ecosystem housing diverse animal life disappears and is replaced by a barren wasteland. And third and obviously, the importance of trees and forests. Trifula trees represent a vital role of trees and forests in the environment, and the film emphasizes their role in providing clean air, maintaining healthy ecosystems, and supporting animal life. The modern portrayal of this Dr. Seuss book is helpful for younger audiences in the modern era of Hollywood, as this has been missing in the rise of animated movies, besides Walt we did. It's very clear what the movie is going for, and it succeeds very well in doing so. Snowpiercer, released in 2013, directed by Bong Joon-ho, and starring Chris Evans, Kang Ho Song, and Jamie Bell. This film is about the survivors of Earth's second ice age, who live out their days on a luxury train that plows through snows and ice. The train's poorest residents, who live in the squalid caboose, plan on improving their life by taking over the engine room. Although there's a lot of bloody fighting, the main ideas shown by the filmmakers have relations to environmental topics, one being climate change and unforeseen surf unforeseen consequences. The film depicts a future Earth ravaged by an attempt to combat global warming via stratospheric aerosol injection, which catastrophically backfired and created a new ice age and caused ecocide, killing literally everything alive in the entire world. This highlights the potential for unintended consequences when dealing with complex environmental problems. Second, social inequality and resource depletion. The film portrays a rigidly stratified society on the Snowpiercer train, reflecting the unequal distribution of resources in a world with limited resources. The wealthy elite occupy the front of the train, and they have a luxurious lifestyle, while the poor are relegated to the harsh conditions at the tail end. This connects to discussions about environmental justice, the, un the unequal impact of environmental problems on different social classes, and the need for equitable solutions. Finally, sustainability and closed systems. The Snowpiercer train functions as a closed system, recycling waste and relying on carefully managed resources. While the film doesn't offer a utopian solution, it prompts discussions about the challenges and potential of closed loop systems and sustainable resource management in a world with limited resources. The film offers a different perspective on a lot of the issues we've analyzed so far, in the sense that it deals with them in very violent solutions. Now, this is clearly not meant to be a suggestion by the filmmakers in the real world, but it does offer another perspective how humanity can approach a lot of issues. Interstellar released in 2014 and directed by the GOAT Christopher Nolan and starring Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, and Michael Caine. This beautiful masterpiece and a personal favorite of mine is about a global cropped light and the second dust bowl that are slowly rendering the planet uninhabitable. Professor Brand, Michael Caine, a brilliant NASA physicist, is working on plans to save mankind by transporting Earth's population to a new home via a wormhole. The first, Brand must send former NASA pilot Cooper, Matthew McConaughey, and a team of researchers through, a, through the wormhole and across the galaxy to find out which of the three planets could be mankind's new home. This movie is showing a lot of complex issues and perspectives, including first, climate change and blight, the film opens on a blighted earth ravaged by dust storms and crop failures. This serves as a stark portrayal of the potential consequences of environmental neglect, which is very apparent in our lives. Second, sustainability and resource scarcity. Humanity faces dwindling resources on a dying earth. The film explores the concept of finding a new home for humanity among the stars. This ties into discussions about sustainable practices and resource management on earth as well as the ethical considerations of space exploration as a potential solution to environmental problems. And third, ad adaptation and resilience. While the film focuses on space travel, it also highlights human capacity for adaptation. The character's efforts to find a new home can be interpreted as a commentary on the need for resilience in the face of environmental challenges. What no one is going for here can be a potential vision of what will happen if we do not do anything about climate change. But obviously, the sci-fi elements limit the scope of this argument. 
but the masterclass acting, directing, and score by Hans Zimmer enables audiences to make an emotional connection to the characters while caring about the important issues at stake. One more. Don't Look Up was released in 2021, only three years ago, directed by Adam McKay and starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, and Rob Morgan. This movie is about two low-level astronomers who must go on a giant media tour to warn mankind of an approaching comet that will destroy planet Earth. This film is super satirical and not really well executed in my mind, but the ideas portrayed does have the connection to how we react to environmental issues. First, public perception of climate change. The film's the film portrays the public's apathy and denial towards the approaching comet that was going to destroy Earth, clear allegory for societal resistance to acknowledging the threat of climate change. The film serves as a springboard for discussions about the challenges of communication and raising awareness about complex environmental issues. Second, the governmental inaction and prioritization. The film sat satirizes, satirizes the government's initials the government's initial dismissal of the comet threat and its focus on short-term political gain over long-term solutions. And this connects to discussions on environmental policy, the influence of special interests, and the challenges of implementing effective climate action plans, like literally our lives right now. And finally, media misrepresentation and distraction. The film portrays the media's sen okay. sensationalization of the comet and their focus on entertainment over accurate information. And this highlights the challenge of communicating scientific information effectively and the role of media in shaping public perception about environmental issues. Now this movie is a different approach than the other nine we looked at as it's not focusing on actual environmental problems, but rather how we as a society react to those problems. And also this is the only film on the list that is post pandemic as in release. So as silly as the satirical comedy aspect of it might be, it's giving us a right now very modern perspective that we need to understand about these environmental issues. And just so we have some data that we can look at to see how we are actually reacting to environmental issues, I have a couple of graphs from Pew Research, which is very reliable, they say. First one, 54% of Americans view climate change as a major threat. The partisan divide has grown just like every issue in our country. This graph shows from 2009 to 2022, we can see that there has been an overall increase uh, in percent of U.S. adults who say global climate change is a major threat to the country. But obviously, between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, it will be different as they have different perspectives on things. But the point is, generally, it's increasing. And that's important as movies are showing this more and more in the last 15 years than they have in the past 100 years. And second, we have another graph from Pew Research. Two thirds of Americans prioritize developing alternative energy sources like wind and solar. And this is percent of US adults who say, first, the US should prioritize expanding oil, coal, gas, natural production, and prioritize developing alternative energy such as wind and solar. And we can see how that is greater than doing more on sustainable practices. And second, how there's, there's more adults who think, who favor the U.S. taking steps to become carbon neutral by 2050 than not to. So, right now, compared to any other time in history, our society has more awareness of these problems, and movies, in my mind, and hopefully the mind of many people, are able to show this and analyze it and allow us to have good conversation about it. So, thank you for watching. I understand it was long, but it had to be. And yeah, have a good one. See ya.